Hello and welcome to EPG Patshala. I'm Dr. Shrabani Basu, Assistant Professor of English in St. Francis College for Women in Hyderabad. The lesson that we would be looking at today focuses more on the African women writers and particularly looks at the works and the life of Buchi Emicheta, uh, who is one of the prominent woman, feminist writer of Africa. Uh, this lesson is a part of the paper African and Caribbean Writing in English. Now, when we look at the overview of African women writers, Africa as a geographic and cultural space is deeply steeped in oral traditions and women have always been considered at the forefront of spreading knowledge and wisdom through oral traditions. So there is always almost a, a heritage of the wise women of Africa who pass on their wisdom, their knowledge orally from one generation to the other. This voice, however, goes unnoticed in the territory of literary traditions. One of the foremost women writers to be credited with the development of contemporary feminist literary tradition in Africa is, of course, Flora Nwapa. The exclusion of women from socioeconomic and political fields is one of the themes of African women's writing. Their gradual uh, condemnation to be ever present in the fringes with no role to play in the center. Women writers also critic their position as the perpetual other. Colonization along with patriarchy continues and still does to oppress women and thus marginalization remains at the center of discussion in any of the work of African women writers. Women writers like Flora Nwapa, Ama Ata Aidu, Mariama Ba, Buchi Emicheta, Sisi Dangaremba and Chimamanda Adichie focus on the brutalities faced by women and strive for liberation and freedom through their writings. They highlight the nuances of female experience by dismantling traditional structures and subversive practices. Now, some of the recurrent concerns in African women's writing uh, are somewhat similar irrespective of the language that the writers are writing or the nationality that they are of. Now, the female critics of African women's writings like Carol Boyce Davis and Molara Okundipe Leslie have investigated the role played by women writers in redefining the field of literature. Davis has examined African women's literature and identified some concerns which are similar and uh, some concerns which are uniquely interesting uh, to African women. For example, motherhood, the presence or the absence of children and the joys and pains thereof. The vagaries of living in a polygamous marriage, the oppression of colonialism and the white rule, the struggle for economic independence, the achievement of balance between relationship between men and friendships with other women, the fickleness of husbands which in a way control their very existence particularly in a traditional polygamous marriage, the importance of having a support system, particularly in the urban environment, the mother-daughter conflict or relationship, the mother-son relationship and the conflict therein, the definition of self but not separate from the tradition or other man-made restrictions. When we analyze these factors which are crucial to the understanding of African women's writings, we see that there is a, always a kind of conflict between binaries. The previous generation, this generation, tradition, modernity, a polygamous marriage, the modern marriage, which one to choose? Now, if we look at in this uh, strain, if we look at the life of Buchi Michita, she's a Nigerian woman writer who also faced several turbulent events in her life and these experiences molded her not only as a mature woman, but also as a writer. She grew up in a traditional environment experiencing gender discrimination which deeply affected her writing. Now, Buchi Michita as a writer started her writing career while single-handedly raising her five children in London and experiencing the hostility of a new culture. 
she never considered London to be her home. She never considered London to be a welcoming place to be. Her first novel, which unfortunately was burned by her husband but later was reclaimed and published as a third one, was The Bride Prize. This hostility and oppression domestically uh, implied is captured with a powerful act of storytelling. The brutalities and violence of a patriarchal culture lend a cathartic effect to her novels and also underscore her immense resilience. Her writings are often autobiographical in nature. One of her novels, In the Ditch and Second Class Citizen, uh, it uh, chronicles some of the events from her personal life. In the Ditch, the previous one, is about her experiences in the black British life, whereas the second class citizen focuses on the theme of gender discrimination and the denial uh, of education to women. Now, these two books, which draw on her experiences, were eventually published in one volume called Ada's Story. She has captured the private and public unrest in the society and has grappled with the strains of a new culture. Conversely, Buchi Michita is a prolific writer who has analyzed the position of women in different uh, spheres of life. She has authored 11 novels and four plays and has also had a spatter in on children's literature. The different roles of women as an individual, as a wife and as a daughter occupy a center stage in Imichita's novels. Through her women characters, she articulates a powerful voice to unearth the anxieties and frustrations of womanhood. Woman quote unquote, being an important entity is viewed differently as per the traditional and the modern ethos. Some of her prominent novels are In the Ditch, which came out in 1972, Second Class Citizen, published in 1974, The Bride Price, which was, as we have already discussed, her first novel but was destroyed uh, in the process of writing, was in, uh, finally published in 1976, the Rape, The Slave Girl, 1977, The Joys of Motherhood, which came out in 1979, Destination Biafra in 1982, and The Rape of Shavi, which came out in 1983. Her autobiography, Head Above Water, published in 1986, records her personal uh, history and the circumstances faced by the blacks in London. Her novels, Adder story, Kahinde and Head Above Water represent the torture women experience at the hands of their spouses and how this stifles their individuality and identity. Some of the prominent themes, including the domestic uh, stifling conditions that we have already discussed, explore, uh, uh, explored in her novels are oppression, slavery and the all-pervasive exploitative nature of patriarchy. Now, some of the accolades and awards which Buchi Mchita won was uh, in 1979, she received the New Statesman Jock Campbell Award for Commonwealth Writers. And also, she was uh, recognized and ordered with the Order of British Empire in 2005. Uh, let's look at uh, the overview of the novel uh, the joys of motherhood, which we want to look, uh, which we want to analyze a little deeply in this section. Now, the joys of motherhood was written in 1979 and is set in Ibiza and Lagos and depicts the tensions between traditional and modern beliefs. It also draws association between slavery and motherhood while exploring the dynamics of pre-colonial and colonial Nigeria. It is a powerful text which depicts the struggles of women in the pre-colonial and colonial Nigeria uh, and the repercussions of cultural collisions as the protagonist Nu Ego moves from Ibiza to Lagos. According to Florence Stratton, the joys of motherhood has two major ideological functions, to valorize the emergence of a female literary tradition and also to refute the conventional images of women. Now, the Plot construction is very structured. The chapters are ironically titled as the mother, the mother's mother, the canonized mother, etc. The novel opens with the suicidal, uh, the suicide attempt of the protagonist new and then it shifts to 25 years 
back before this act. The story then navigates to the Ibuza homeland and the readers are introduced to New's father Akbari and her mother Una. Now, New Ego is shown to be the love child of Una and Akbari. Prior to New's birth, a slave girl was supposed to sacrifice her life because one of Akbari's wife died. Now, this was a tradition where if one of the wives of the fam the one of the wives of the family dies, one of the slave girls will be expected to to sacrifice her life in honor for her mistress. The slave girl in the novel pleads for her life and does not wish to die. She promises to come back with vengeance. Now, this brings uh, us to the concept of chi in Igbo culture. Chi in the Igbo context refers to a guide, but in this novel, it is a spirit reincarnation of the dead slave girl who haunts New continuously and is also believed to be one of the reasons of New's uh, initial infertility. The novel is a tragic rendition of New's life whose preoccupation is to become a mother and define her life only in terms of motherhood, the only safe uh, definition or safe uh, status that a woman can survive with, according to her. The novel details the tragedy that befalls on New Ego when she fails to conceive after her marriage to her first husband, Amotoku. New experience pangs of humiliation because she is not able to conceive, which according to her society is a sacrilege. Her husband Amatoku deserts her and proves his quote-unquote manliness by marrying another woman who begets a child promptly. New attempts to nurse this child and is finally caught and snubbed off from his compound. There is a sense of displacement in New's life because she has to move to Lagos to complete her fortune as a mother. She marries Naifi and her dream shatters in the first instance because a child that is born to her dies within four weeks. In response to, as a reaction to this tragic loss, Nu becomes hysterical after the loss of her child and experiences alienation and loses a sense of worth. But later, she's restored to her senses after the birth of her son, Ushia. Now, Nu's husband works for an English family, but he soon loses this job, adding to the economic burden in the family. Nu has to carry local trade of selling cigarettes which was not exactly condoned by the society, but was not uh, condemned uh, altogether because it was in uh, an attempt to relieve the economic burden, the financial burden of a family. After a few days, Naifi is drafted into the army and shipped off to Burma to fight in the World War II. While he's away, New and her son Oshia are forced to vacate the premises uh, because of her inability to meet the rents and other utilities of the premise. New faces many problems while taking care of her sons Oshia and Adim. Tragedy befalls on the family again when Naifi's brother dies and his wife Adaku arrives at New's compound as the new wife to Naifi. This is all again an African tradition where if the brother's wife dies, that the brother-in-law uh, the brother of the dead husband is supposed to uh, marry the widow. Initially, there is a rivalry between New and Adaku, but later they wage silent war against their husband by refusing to cook meals for him. The tension in the family continues to grow due to poverty. New and her family are famished. And she assumes that her sons will come home to live later and will care for her as she ages. And this growing tension within the family and the expectations from the children continues almost till the entire novel. Now, when her children heard of her sudden death, they all, even Oshia, they come home. They were all sorry she had died before they were in a position to give their mother a good life. So in a response to News' death, she is uh, in a very curious and in a very uh, cathartic 
episode, she is given the noisiest and the most costly second burial Ibiza had ever seen. And also, a shrine was made in her name so that her children could appeal to her should they be barren. It is almost a sarcasm and irony uh, which is made by Buji Michita because the woman who is denied of everything and whose principal uh, uh, difficulty in life was due to her motherhood or the lack of her conceiving is now given the noisiest burial, the costliest burial and his shrine is made for uh, aspirant mothers. The title of the novel is a biting commentary on the outlook of the society which validates a woman only after her motherhood. According to Mary Kula Walls, the joys of motherhood is an ironic portrait of the artist as a conscience of her society. The story is one of Emichita's strongest indictments of a woman clinging to marriage at all costs, which, in a way, Mary Kula Wall thinks Buchi Michita detests. Now, Let's look at some of the themes in the novel which Buchi Michita takes particular uh, effort in, um, in, in, in explaining. The first theme that we find in The Joys of ne uh, Motherhood is the tradition versus the modern culture. We witness different pictures of womanhood through the pre and the post colonial periods. The novel chronicles the difficulties of abiding by traditional culture in a modern society. Now, Nu's mother Una is shown to be the representative of the pre-colonial African woman who is assertive. Nu, on the other hand, continues to conform to the traditional customs in the face of rapid transformation only to realize that these practices are now futile. She almost religiously adheres to the values laid down by Ibuza patriarchy, ultimately leading to alienation as she dies gradually a lonely death. Her co-wife, co uh, Adaku, does not devote herself to the Ibuza customs and resorts to prostitution for survival. This comparison between Nu and Adaku is a realistic depiction of the African society and it reflects Imichita's denial of traditional values for a more radical position. Imichita takes a dig at some of the traditional practices like bride price, which we know now that in Ibiza, many girls are married at an early age to collect the bride price and this practice is criticized by the author. In, uh, in The Joys of Motherhood, uh, New, in an attempt to uh, to have or to educate her sons tries to marry off her daughters to collect the bride price. It is the benefit which is collected on behalf of the male members in the family in the staunchly uh, uh, in the staunchly traditional um, Nigerian families, Nigerian society. The second very obvious uh, theme that Buchi Michita explores is of course colonization and how it has a negative impact on the lives of women which Buchi Michita con uh, is convinced is the root of all problems, especially in terms of social, economic and political influences. The first uh, impact which Buchi Michita looks at under colonization is the social impact because she believes that the Victorian concept of womanhood which uh, which uh, sets a very adherent, a very critical definition of what is proper womanhood uh, that is piety, purity, submissiveness and domesticity and he, she considers to be uh, these very definitive, uh, very a narrow understanding of womanhood, expectation of a, from a woman, which is the root of the social troubles proliferated in uh, a woman's life under the colonial regime. In this novel, new ego is steeped in the domesticity and therefore she feels incomplete without attaining the safe status of motherhood. The narrator of Joys of Motherhood states that to regard a woman who is quiet and timid as desirable was something that came after Agbadi's time with Christianity and other changes. Of course, these ideas are controversial. The economic and political impact uh, which uh, Buchi Michita explores in the Joys of Motherhood is uh, 
is 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 uh, represented in the shift from an agrarian society to a more modern industrial society. The economic and political roles of the women enable them to voice their opinions and become self-sufficient in the agrarian society. With the intrusion of colonial policies, the uh, pre-colonial African women lost their independence and economic freedom. On the other hand, men as well became pawns in the hands of white men. The next prominent theme which Buchi Michita explores in uh, The Joys of Motherhood is the link between slavery and womanhood. In her eyes, slavery and womanhood are deeply connected because there is a stark similarity because women do not ever get to have the right to assert their individuality. They are the perpetual voiceless, perpetual uh, subservience. African women face oppression at different levels due to race, class, and gender. The first uh, subcategory that uh, she looks at in the novel under the slavery and the condition of women is the imposition due to customs. In this novel, the slave woman is a literal and symbolic representation of oppression uh, and new ego for one is said to suffer because of her chi is a slave woman. The characters say that the guiding angel is slave and that's why she is unfortunate. And the slave woman was forcibly pushed into the coffin with Akbari's dead wife, Agunwa. And according to some customs, this was the beginning of new ego's misfortunes. The next point that she looks at is the enslavement as a woman. Now, the critics believe that new ego is enslaved because of the because of the very narrow and confined expectations of motherhood. This enslavement leads to identity crisis and she experiences a sense of incompleteness while she remains childless. Marriage is a kind of enslavement for women in the African society according to Buchi Michita as she has to obey many oppressive standards set by the husband. As a married woman, motherhood is one factor which enables a woman to attain any so semblance of status in the society. A barren woman's position is akin to a slave as she experiences perpetual discrimination in her family and society. Now, new ego is, is unfortunate because she ends up becoming a slave to these roles and does not experience the joys of motherhood in the truer sense of the term. She's forever steeped into misfortune because of her expectations which she has set for herself and also the expectations which the society has set for her. Now the effects of patriarchy refers to the rule of the father as we all know and new sufferings as a woman are augmented because she lives in a society where women is considered to prove her worth by adhering to the standards which are left for the men to decide on by giving a birth to many children. Imichita has experienced the subjugating effects of patriarchy uh, and she externalizes some of her ideas about patriarchy through her novels. Now, the point on gender roles in patriarchal society is very clear in Buchi Imichita's work because there is always a very uh, explicitly discrimination between are made between the male characters and the female characters of the novel. The man being in a superior position has to hold an authoritative position in Buchi Michita's works and all his decisions are expected to be acknowledged and considered. A woman is confined to the four walls of her house and her interests only revolve around serving the man and his family members. Producing male children is the only thing which will bring reward to women. Women have no individuality here and the freedom to think for themselves. In this novel, Una is the only woman who defies many patriarchal norms, but there are also women like New Ego, the protagonist, who are confined to the decisions made by the male members of the family. The gender roles are also dismantled to a certain extent. This is reflected through the relationship between New and her husband, Naifi. 
Imichita describes Naifi as one who is supposed to care for his family, but he keeps getting more wives and abandons his children to his wife Nuigo to care for. Nu takes on the responsibility of a family, a role traditionally performed by men. She is the bread earner. She earns money and takes care of her children. Her husband, on the other hand, has to serve the white men by performing tasks like generally accepted by women. There is a very tacit reversal of roles between New Ego and Naifi here. Now, the gender discrimination which the novel elucidates is a deeply entrenched notions of gender roles in society. Gender discrimination takes place in both the private and the public uh, sphere in Imichita's work. Women are not considered worthy of being educated. There is inequality in terms of education given to girls than to the boys. New and her husband thinks about their son's education and daughters are considered to be mere objects uh, who, will, who will earn them bright prices. To educate which will be enough to educate their sons. Thus the money that they get as bride prices is used for the son's education and uh, they strive to give the best education for their son Oshia. Their second son is also considered for this privilege but the daughters are never considered uh, for any privilege whatsoever other than their obvious commodification. Their marriage was also a means to receive good bright price used as the investment uh, for the son who obviously are supposed to take care of the parents. This is a result of a deep rooted, rooted gender conditioning. The men and women hanker after producing male children in an African society which reflects the deep rooted effects of patriarchy where a woman's voice and role in society is always limited. Now, the next point that we look at, that is the masculinity and the femininity is very clear as all the characters, all the male characters of this novel are off to prove their masculinity uh, by producing more children and by being violent with their wives and by the number of concubines that they have. On the other hand, the femininity of the characters are proved by their submissiveness, their piety, their uh, being polite and the number of children or male children that they manage to present their husband's family with. Now, the next point that we look at are also uh, the polygamous practices of, uh, uh, you know, the African society uh, where the traditional African uh, society or the traditional African family, the patriarch of the family is expected to have multiple wives to present or to represent his uh, masculinity and also his wealth. The culture of Ibuza encourages men to marry more than one wife which is reflected through the character of both Amatku and Agbari. Now the effect of polygamy and its repercussions on the rivals New and Adaku when New is married to Naifi come across in this novel as the independent spirited Adaku is constantly pitted against the traditional New. While polygamous marriages offered communal care and mothering in pre-colonial Nigerian society, it can also be argued that this is no longer an applicable, uh, uh, applicable set of rule in contemporary Nigeria which uh, faces neocolonialism, mismanaged independence with a heavy toll on women's independence. The next idea that we look at uh, when we are talking about Bujimichita is the obvious concept of motherhood. Now, Chinua Achibi in his novel Things Fall Apart, which many of us are familiar with, has accorded supreme status to the mother. The mother is supreme and it's an adage which is clearly elaborated in the text and the significance of the mother in a person's life is expounded by depicting the way a child seeks refuge in his motherland during times of crisis. This has some similarities with the novel The Joys of Motherhood. Now, motherhood is this, uh, in this novel is directly equivalent to identity. New questions her worth as a woman when she fails to conceive. Imichita has critiqued the notion of 
motherhood by depicting the emotional trauma that Nu goes through to experience the joys of motherhood. In the traditional Igbo society, a woman is incomplete without children. And again, male children are always favored over women children. A woman is made to believe that her status in society is established only after conceiving and raising male children and the cycle goes on. The theme of motherhood also moves to discussing the dismal state of society for not recognizing the importance of a girl child. The goal of a woman's life in Buchimi Tijita's work appears to uh, be giving birth to many children and uh, strive for the family and children keeping her personal aspirations away. However, ironically, it is this very fervor that entraps her in a lifetime of self-sacrifice. News, uh, role in society is not only confined by the idea and the, uh, the, the expectations of motherhood, but also the idea and expectation of sacrifice and motherhood and sacrifice as if in Imichita's work, uh, walk hand in hand. Now, uh, the technique which Buchi Michita employs in this novel is clearly the building uh, technique as it records the development of the character. According to Mari Ume, Imchita employs the techniques of Bilduk's Roman novel of formation to underscore the development of the protagonist's mind and character as she matures and recognizes her role in life. She also that is, Imichita also skillfully uses flashbacks to weave together information central to the development of the plot and to the full understanding of her character's relationships to both the external and the spirit worlds. Now, towards the end of this novel, we look at how the title of the novel, The Joys of Motherhood, is not only ironic, but it also critiques all the oppressive customs and traditions which marginalize women uh, as a part of the traditional heritage. The apparent joys culminate into miseries and the ideas of womanhood and gender discrimination are subsequently dismantled. These are concepts which are accepted as constructs. Above all, it is a scathing attack on the colonial policies that subjugate women by erroneously projecting positive ideal, ideals of development. The novel is also an attempt to depict the realities of African women's life and clarify romanticized notions of motherhood and womanhood. Now, in this lesson, we have looked into not only the conditions of uh, conditions in which African feminist writers, particularly the women writers of Africa, uh, write in. And this is also uh, an in-depth analysis of the plot, the themes, and the characteristics rampant in the novel, The Joys of Motherhood. For further uh, reading, you might consider looking at the Learn More section of the lesson. And also to test your understanding of the lesson, you might consider taking the uh, self-assessment test. Thank you.